Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Grill Nation show with Jason Grill. Thanks for joining us today on the radio. If you're listening on KMBZ 980 AM, if you're joining us today on podcasts on Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you're on our website, grillnationshow.com, thank you very much for visiting there. Or if you're watching our live stream on my social media pages, thank you for joining us. We hope you had a great holiday weekend. And you are back to the grind. We're going to have a great show today. Uh, very excited about this show. I'm probably going to be hungry after it, but uh, I'm excited to have on. Uh, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, actually? We're, we're talking to Alex from Chicken and Pickle. Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jason. Um, my name is Alex Staub, and I am the Director of Culinary for Chicken and Pickle. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a Kansas City native. Been cooking, I don't know, for about the past 15 years. Um, love food, love chicken and pickle. Um, great team, great environment, uh, great concept. So thanks for having us on. So Alex, so, um, talk to me about your upbringing. You're a, a native Kansas city and or where are you at? Did you go to Rockers for some reason? I feel like you might've gone to Rockers. I am a Rockers, Rockers grad. So, okay. uh, dad was a Rockers grad. Grandfather was a Rockers grad. So yeah, uh, Rockers through and through. Okay, because I was curious. I was looking at your LinkedIn to prepare for today's show, and I, I noticed you had a lot of mutual uh, mutual friends of mine from either SLU or from, uh, yeah, mostly from SLU. I guess that's where okay. I met my Rockers friends at when I went to college there. So, I think twenty something of my graduating class went to SLU. Okay, um, so you were- I was 01. Okay, so right around me then. I was I got nine oh oh one from college, ninety seven high school. So okay. Um, so we have we have a lot of mutual friends, is what I'm saying. So when we linked yeah. it up, you'll, you'll be able to tell, and it'll, it'll be pretty fun to look at. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, okay, so you grew up here. You, you went to school at Rockhurst. Obviously, you got a good education there for sure. Um, talk to us about kind of the next steps in your journey before we get get to chicken and pickle. You know, every like my grandfather and father, um, both attorneys, um, and so uh, there's doctors or lawyers in my family, so. Uh, I went off to Arizona State and Oh, wow, did you really? I just was out I there did. Two weeks I did. Ago. I I was out there for a semester. <laughs> and then moved back <laughs> home after that. <laughs> you know, you forget um, how close that is to the airport there. I always forget yeah. whenever I go to Phoenix Scottsdale how uh how close Arizona State really is to the airport. It's it's pretty quick. It's pretty quick. I got uh aunt and uncle and some cousins who live out in Phoenix. So it's uh it's good to get out there every now and then. Um but yeah, you know, I, I Went to college and then had about a year left and decided I wanted to uh, become a chef. Um, <laughs> my dad didn't think that was the most wise decision. Um, said, you're not going to make any money. You're going to work long, horrible hours and uh, somehow kind of navigated a path. So, um, Did you come back to Kansas City or did you, did you navigate it elsewhere at the beginning? I, I actually came back to Kansas City. Um, and one of my good friends, his uncle happened to own Bellinopoly in Brookside. Um, oh, so that, that, yeah, I'm in Brookside. So uh, yeah, so I live in Brookside. I I bet I live about five minutes from there, five to ten minutes walking distance. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so I, I've uh, I've had a few meals there. I guess you would say. <laughs> I I pretty much grew up in Brookside. So um, I went to St. Elizabeth's grade school. So that's kind of my old stomping grounds. Um, so, uh, got a job there, um, from there, went to New York, cooked in New York for a while, then, uh, came back and, and took over Bellinopoly. And, um, at the time, Jake was still the owner, has always been the owner. Um, our front of house manager was a guy by the name of, uh, Giorgio, Anton Girolami. He is the, uh, assistant head coach for Rutgers University, uh, men's soccer team. Um, but he is a, a native Roman. Um, and so him and I just kind of, you know, started doing some dinners and, uh, incorporated the homemade pasta, you know, making sausage there. Um, and his family has restaurants over in Italy. So I went back to his family's restaurants and cooked over there. Um, my mom's side's Italian. So that's kind of where the love of, of Italian. We have, a lot in. Common. we have more in common than I thought. Cause so is mine. Uh, okay. yeah. I'm hundred percent Italian. She is Sicilian, um, okay. so I'm Italian and I went to St. Pius. So. At St. Pius, you know, half Italian, I, I, I wasn't a, at the time, you know, I was in the, probably in the lower class of uh, Italian uh, uh, bloodlines uh, yeah. in high school. But, um, yeah, I love that. So you love Italian food. So, yeah, that's that was all I cooked for 
probably the first 10, 12 years. So, um, yeah, that was, that was, I mean, even before we did chicken and pickle, Bill Crooks had tried to get me to do some stuff with him. <laughs> I would tell him to take a hike unless it was Italian. So it was pretty funny. Um, so I, I, uh, you are a lover of everything Italian. What, uh, what, what do you think about Italian food right now in KC? Cause I mean, I, um, that's always a conversation. It seems to me, you know, you coming from Bella Napoli, there is a, there's a lot more Italian options now than there was a few years ago. You know, I, I think there, I think there is, I'm not, I, I am still more of a traditionalist. And I, I guess when I say traditionalist more in the kind of what's going on in Italy in the sense, not, um, you know, probably like your family, you know, when uh, my mom's side was from Sicily as well, you know, when they came over here in the early 1900s, you know, uh, they had Sicilian specific uh, recipes that they brought over, you know, and then with the ingredients they could find, you know, these kind of adapted into these, you know, uh, Sicilian American dishes. Um, but I'm, I, I kind of gravitate more towards, I don't know, regional cuisine of Italy, um, you know, old dishes, you know, uh, rigatoni alla matriciana, carbonara, porchetta, um, things of that nature. Um, and so there's some, uh, Giorgio and I laughed because his wife is uh, went to Pius <laughs> and yeah. is from North Kansas City, and you know she's Italian American, and you know he he eats some things that sometimes <laughs> he's like, this isn't Italian. You won't find this in Italy. So I mean, it's a, there, there's that difference. But no, I I think I think Kansas City as a whole, I I, I think is uh, the choices you're finding now are are broader and better, um, you know, as an aggregate versus probably what you found ten or fifteen years ago. Um, I, I just think people are traveling more. I think there's more information about food. I think people are more interested about food. Um, so, I, you know, I think on a whole, it's it's, it's a good thing. Um, as a traditionalist, sometimes I just, I cook most of my own food. So, um, What would you recommend to me at Bella Napoli before we get into your new role at Chicken and Pickle? What, what dish, if I had to pick a dish when I walk over there, maybe uh, for lunch tomorrow or the next day, should I pick up? Yeah, you know, I I actually haven't. Ate at Bellinopoli in probably got about a year. I mean, their their short rib ragu is always good. Their pizzas are always good. Um, they do a good job of carbonara. I believe they have uh, I'm at their channel on the menu. Um, I love all these so things you're saying right now, Alex. <laughs> but um, Alex, Alex uh, is with us. Alex, stop. Correct. Correct. Alex, stop. I wanted to make sure I said that correct. Uh, he is the culinary director at uh, Chicken and Pickle, which we had to give your background. I had to hear about this Italian background and Italian cooking, love of Italian food, before we get into our show today about Chicken and Pickle and kind of the direction that you've taken it um, since you've been culinary director. Uh, it looks like from your bio since 2016. So we're going to get into that. We're going to learn more about what it is. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our listeners have been there before. I've been there a few times uh, and love to talk to you more about that and hopefully talk more and more about food on the show today and kind of kind of what your what your inspirations are and kind of uh, wh what you what you pull from for chicken and pickle. You're listening to the Grill Nation show. Uh, we'll be right back after the break. Thanks for joining us today. OK, Alex, we're saving our first segment. Great job. That was perfect. Fun. It was fun. I'm some pasta now. I'm gonna, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be out in LA on uh, this weekend, and so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to some nice pasta places out there. Where are you going out there? Just like you know, southern. Just uh, I'll be in like Hollywood, West Hollywood area. Okay. But usually I go, I go to Brentwood, uh, okay, Santa Monica. But uh, I love pasta, man. I, there, I've been to some very good pasta restaurants in other cities. Here, you know, I'm, I'm I, I, I tend to go to Plate and Brookside a lot. Uh, Obviously, I grew up going to Casconi's. Um, my grandpa's favorite. What? <laughs> Casconi's was my grandfather's favorite. So. Oh yeah, I can't <laughs> tell you how many. I can't tell you how many uh, family gatherings we've had there in my lifetime. Oh, I know. That's funny. That's funny. We went there before every high school football game, too. Sounds about right. <laughs> when you play high school football at Pius, you got a nice uh, pregame meal at Casconi's around four thirty, and then you then you. Uh, and then you, you know, it's funny to think about. We were eating a uh, a lot of uh, heavy foods pre pregame back then. A lot of lasagna, yeah. you know, pre, uh -huh. pre football games. Yep, <laughs> a little different these days. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, my friend Damian Ferris just sent me a text to tell you hello. He's watching. Oh, Damian's awesome. Yeah, Damian's awesome. 
He definitely is. As soon as Darren gives us the heads up on the private chat, we'll uh, we'll, we'll continue. Uh, he can't talk to me today. Yeah, Damien, I'll put up. Here he goes. Okay, he says we're rolling now. This is a longer segment, Alex. So uh, okay. in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Grill Nation show with Jason Grill. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, whether you're listening on the radio, on podcast, on the web, or on our live stream here. Again, you can connect with me on social media, at Jason Grill and at Grill Nation Show. On Twitter, also on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, Jason Grill. Thank you again for uh, for engaging with us each and every week. Today we're joined by Alex Staub, who is the culinary director of Chicken and Pickle. Already a fan favorite. We had a, uh, a comment come in from Damian Ferris. Look at these two guys. So. We have people watching us right now, so that's a good thing. To, that's a good thing to have. Um, okay, so we kind of talked about your uh, your work at Bella Napoli, and and you moved to Chicken and Pickle uh, in 2016. For our listeners who have not been there, um, kind of tell us what it is and kind of what goes on at Chicken and Pickle before we get into kind of your your cooking and whatnot and food inspiration. So Chicken and Pickle is um, family fun and entertainment. Um, we offer a, a wide variety of activities, um, uh, food, and food's a small part of it. Um, there's pickleball courts, there's outdoor games. We do live music. We host, um, you know, chef dinners that raise money for charities. We start, or start bike tours, uh, just kind of a little bit of everything. You know, we, just, we try to be kind of a staple of the community. Um, we have a big property where everyone can kind of come and hang out and eat and drink, um, play yard games, bags, giant Jenga, giant battleship. Um, we, we try to give, you know, people a place to kind of go and get away from, you know, everyday life per se, uh, put your cell phones down and, and hang out and talk and, and enjoy yourself. If I remember correctly, when it opened, um, you know, that was an area that was kind of underdeveloped. And it wasn't an area that was underdeveloped. A revolution in North Kansas City, at least with your first location, correct? Correct. Um, you know, I came on when we were kind of designing the concept, and you know, uh, we didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, we knew that pickleball was the fastest growing sport in the nation. Um, that it had a good following. That it was gaining more and more traction. Um, we wanted to kind of create some areas where people could kind of come and hang out and, and enjoy themselves. And our, you know, um, Bill Crooks, his whole model, um, to this was to try to be, um, low tech and high touch. So it's, we try to make it about people interaction versus coming and being on your cell phone. Um, you know, come and hang out. Uh, we, we try to encourage people to stay for two to three hours, you know, bring your dog bring your kids. Um, I mean, I take my daughter there uh, all the time and she loves it. Mm -hmm. She climbs in trees and plays bags and plays pickleball and runs around. Um, so it's very, you know, family oriented, very uh, people friendly. Mm -hmm. You mentioned pickleball and, you know, you guys have evolved. You know, I, I'd heard of pickleball, God, about five to seven years ago. I was out on the East Coast and they had pickleball courts. I remember where I was, somewhere yeah. in like maybe Carolinas or somewhere up there. Uh, maybe in the DC area and they had them. And I, you know, I played tennis in high school um, at, for my spring sport. Uh, and I just, it just was so cool. And I just saw people doing it. And then, you know, we didn't have any of that going on in Kansas city. And so you guys started with that, but you mentioned some of these other things you have, it truly has evolved with a lot of other sports, right? You know, chicken and pickle is, you know, pickleball is, you know, at the core of who chicken and pickle is, um, but most people actually who go to Chicken and Pickle don't play pickleball. Um, they come to hang out. There's a variety of other games. We do bingo. Bingo. We host like Saturday, Sunday morning yoga. Um, so there's, it's just a variety of things that we do. And, and we also have really competitive pickleball players and pickleball tournaments and pickleball leagues and beginners classes. So it's, there's, uh, there's a wide range of things that we kind of do. It's kind of, kind of hard to keep your head wrapped around all of it actually yeah you definitely have a lot i actually the first place i think the first place i went um the first outing i had in, during covid I, it was like for a friend's birthday um first time i actually drank out of a beer glass i think during covid in may of 2020 when kind of things were opening up again uh -huh. i guess you could say was at chicken and pickle 
Nice. So I had that weird like <laughs> feeling about like there's people like playing games and, and it and so I will never forget like coming out of COVID the first place I actually was uh, just for a drink uh, which was there and then it was just it was kind of surreal coming back out of the house but I know a lot of people were there over the weekend I mean it sounds like it was it's just always it's always just the place to be you know it's we're fortunate um, we're fortunate we are we are busy but uh, especially during COVID. Just because we have so much space, you know, we are able to social distance and bring quite a bit of people together, um, you know, and keep them safe and keep everything clean and sanitized. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting year for everyone, obviously. Um, but it's been it's been good, you know. Um, it's been good that at least for us that we had space that we could kind of, you know, do some things that probably some other people's couldn't, you know, just just because you know, I mean, our North Kansas City property is our smallest one. So most of our other properties are about double that size. So let's talk about that. So you guys have grown and expanded. Um, you started here in North Kansas City, but I know you're in other locations around the region, or will be, but also in other cities, right? Correct. So we uh, we have North Kansas City, which was the first. Wichita was the second one, which we opened about two years ago, and then we actually opened uh, two other stores during COVID. Um, so we opened San Antonio um, right about when COVID hit. Um, and then Oklahoma City, probably what seven, eight months after San Antonio. Um, so we have four stores now. Um, South Kansas City should open, I'm guessing, late October, early November. And, wh- and where is that again? So 135th in Nall, so Prairie Fire. Okay. Yeah, I was at a, a coffee yesterday, um, breakfast, and they were talking about, I, I mentioned I was going to have chicken and pickle and Alex on the show today. And- I mentioned you were opening and people already knew about that location. Yeah, it's coming along. So we're, we're really excited about, you know, opening up our second location in South Kansas City. Um, it, when we opened the North Kansas City one, we were having people from, you know, 35 miles drive in. Um, you know, so obviously, <laughs> obviously we... <laughs> it's a destination, man. You've made it is. Pickleball, pickleball has now become a trend and a destination, but also... I think people just like the the social aspects and we're not even, we're not going to get into the food that you're working on until the next segment, but there's just so many things to do there. There is. And, you know, I think, I think that's the fun thing, you know, we it, obviously you can't have everything for everyone, but we try to offer, you know, a wide range of things that can, you know, keep a lot of people entertained, you know, mm-hmm. so keep it, you know, keep it simple. It's good, wholesome family fun. So. What is, the, uh, what is the age demographics or, you know, what age range do you usually see at your, at your, uh, at chicken and pickles? We honestly say six to 86. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's that expansive. Um, I mean, you'll have, you know, baby strollers and you'll have grandparents and great grandparents. So that's, that's actually the really, the really neat thing about it is it's, it's all walks of life. It's all ages. It's all people. So. You guys, uh, do you guys ever have like events there? I, I noticed maybe once you had like the Tiger Club of Missouri, or you had the head football coach of Mizzou. I know uh, the actual founder or chairman of your company is a big Mizzou guy, correct? Correct. Yeah, we have all sorts of events. Um, you know, there's Chiefs cheerleaders, there's Casey Wolf, there's MU events. Um, we do local farmer events. Um, we work with Good Nature Family Farms, which is a group of about 150 local farmers. Um, so I think we're going to do four or five different vegetable days where they're going to come and bring up a bunch of vegetables or produce or fruits. Um, and we'll make some dishes with them, do some drinks with them and, and sell a bunch of produce. So there's, there's a lot of different things that we do. Um, but it's all kind of based around, you know, the communities in which we're in, whether it's Kansas city, Wichita, San Antonio, Oklahoma city. Um, so it's all about trying to, trying to get the community there. One thing I did mention, we're talking to Alex Staub, who's the Chicken and Pickle Culinary Director. The website is Chicken and Pickle. That's Chicken in the letter N in Pickle. Excuse me, chickenandpickle.com. I'll put that up on the screen. Um, you guys have a team in Kansas City that I was very impressed by. You, you know, um, a pretty large team, you know, in, in a lot of different roles uh, that you all play. Tell us about the team of, of that you work with at Chicken and Pickle. Uh, I'm pretty fortunate. There's, you know, there's obviously quite a few of us. Um, the team is, is, um, very dynamic. There's a lot of different personalities, a lot of different strengths. Um, uh, you know, there's, uh, when Dave and Bill kind of put this team together, they just, and the best part about them is like, they're all great people. So it's, you know, my background was food. Um, 
Bill Koenig, who's, you know, kind of my other half and does front of house operations. I mean, that's, that's his, that's his niche and he's great at it. Um, you know, we have an IT guy, Brad, who's been doing IT forever. So he's designing our webpage. He's doing our pickleball reservation platform. Um, you know, Bill Crooks from PB&J Restaurant Group, he's the one who kind of leads these teams. Um, his background of, you know, 30, 35 years of restaurants. Um, you know, just, just a lot of people who, who kind of make it work. Kelly on the uh, community side, um, you know, each chicken and pickle location gives away, I don't even know how much money a year, but they just, she gets uh, charities. I mean, I think there's, you know, 50, 60, 100 charities in each city that we work with. Um, so there's, there's just a lot of really dynamic people that just, you know, have a set of strengths that, uh, blend themselves to chicken and pickle and, and the uh, diversity of things that we do. So it makes it really kind of fun and interesting. Yeah, it does. And if you go to your website at chickenandpickle.com, there's kind of a, there's photos of all the staff and all the team. And, uh, it's pretty impressive to be quite honest with you. I mean, just there, I guess there's just so many operations going on there at, at any time. Like we talked about with both the sports angle, the food angle, uh, the events angle uh, and whatnot. So we're going to get into more of that. We're talking to Alex Staub, who's the culinary director of Chicken and Pickle. Their website is chickenandpickle.com. When we come back from the break, Alex, we're going to really get into the meat and potatoes of what you do. I want to learn about kind of what your inspiration is for the menu. Obviously, you've been in the Italian food industry for a long time. Now you're in Chicken and Pickle. Um, what your menu looks like, most popular items, what your vision is for the food and the evolution. I mean, there's a lot of things that happen with athletic events and, and drinking and whatnot. I mean, what, how does that affect the food? We're going to get into all these topics here after the break. You're listening to the Grill Nation show here on 980 AM KMBZ on podcast or via our website. When you're watching us on our live stream right now, we greatly appreciate it. We'll be right back after the break. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, Alex, great job. Um, we're going to have a long segment now talking about food. You Perfect. Ready? Yep. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so Damien, I've known my whole life. We grew up together. Okay. He, um, you know, he's at U.S. Food now, but he yep. uh, was over at the Jazz for many years. So I yep. uh, visited him there many times. So we're him and I, we were, we were fighting between U.S. Food, Cisco, and Benny Keith. Um, and so we're still kind of walking down that path. Um, we had some uh, accounting issues, so we decided to kind of stay with Cisco for the you know immediate future, but are revisiting here in six to eight months. So Damien and I have been playing phone tag here for about the last <laughs> year. <laughs> well, good. Well, you definitely should meet with him. Um, okay. So we're ready to rock, man. We'll get going here in three, two, one. Welcome back to the Grill Nation show with Jason Grill. I am uh, your host. Uh, we got another comment that just came in from George uh, on our live stream. Thanks, both of you. Good job. Got to go for now. Thank you for listening and watching today, George. We greatly appreciate it. I am joined today again by Alex Stab, Stab, excuse me, Chicken and Pickle Culinary Director. Their website is chickenandpickle.com. I put that on the website. As always, you can connect with me on social media. We appreciate you subscribing to our LinkedIn page, our YouTube page, excuse me, and we also would love to collaborate with you on a show. You can just email me at grillnationshow at gmail.com if you want to be a partner or collaborator with the show. Today again, uh, Alex is joining us. Alex, it's time to talk about food. Uh, you are the culinary director of Chicken and Pickle, so... Let's get right into that. Um, tell us about your menu, man. Uh, what is on it? What's what's it like? So our menu, we try to keep our regular walk-up menu pretty kind of short and concise. Um, we feature rotisserie chicken. So we get um, antibiotic-free, hormone-free, vegetable-fed chickens in. We brine them for about 18 hours. We have special racks that they go and sit on and they air dry for another 12. And then we put them on our rotisserie. Um, that all we use is oak wood to cook them. So there's no gas, there's no charcoal, uh, none of that. So they cook in about an hour and 45, two hours. Um, and then we grill them off with four different rubs. Um, and they each get like a citrus depending on on the rub you get. Uh, a little tortilla and a little serrano pepper with them. Um, other than rotisserie chicken, we have some appetizers. We got wings, we got a chorizo fondue. 
We have tostadas, fried pickles in all locations, but North Kansas City, but those are working themselves back here. Um, variety of sandwiches, salads, sides, um, and some cast iron desserts. So that's that's kind of the main, um, if you want to go up there and eat, uh, walk through the line and, and order some of those items. Another, another comment from on our uh, live stream from uh, Benny Heisler, the new chicken and pickle and OP will be walking distance from my house. Cannot wait. I mean, you guys have really built quite an empire here. Um, chicken is interesting. Okay. So, um, <laughs> you know, when I think about pickleball, I'm, I'm usually, I mean, the fact that you've engaged these two things is cool. Um, you know, the only thing I really associate with rotisserie chicken before is, is, uh, back in law school when I go to the grocery store and just buy it there, you know, I, and it's like pretty cool that people come and it's really the spices and the flavorings is what kind of sold me, sold me on it. Um, what were those again? So on. we have we have four different spice rubs. We have a house rub, which actually is more of uh, for us Italians the porchetta, as where kind of okay. <laughs> where, where the spice rub came from. We have a jerk. We have a southwest, which is like chipotle, ancho, uh, paprika, and then we have a uh, seven chili, which is kind of a Japanese togarashi. So there's seven different Japanese chilies, some sesame, some uh, grapefruit, some ground up seaweed. Um, so they all kind of go a different direction um, and get some playfulness to it. Mm -hmm. So besides the chicken, what is the most popular item you have? Uh, two most popular items we have are our pickled chicken. So we actually um, marinate our chicken breast in pickle juice. Uh, and then we grill it and it gets topped with jack cheese, bacon, a pickled slaw and some smashed avocado. Um, and then probably right behind that company wide is our NKC hot. So it is a breaded fried chicken breast that gets some spicy slaw, some hot sauce, um, in between a bun. So those are our, our two most popular sandwiches. That sounds delicious. I, I, uh, I just want people to know that are listening, maybe that are, that aren't, that are, you know, obviously you cater to people between the ages of six and 86. So, um, people come there just to have drinks, eat some good food and watch sporting events. Am I wrong? You are correct. You are okay. correct. A lot of people do that. Um, there's kind of two parts to to our food. Um, two main parts, I would say. There's there's the menu that you can kind of walk up and order, and there's a, a whole different catering menu. That's about three pages long. So we host anywhere between, you know, on a Saturday or Friday night, um, 10 to 15 events. And these events could have 50 to 100 people on them. Um, and so they are, there's a predetermined menu that they can order off of. There's, you know, a barbecue option. There's a rotisserie option. There's a luau option. So we do hula hula chicken and steak pineapple skewers. Um, there's an Italian option. So we'll have lasagna, pastas, garlic bread, you know, Caesar salads. So there's a lot of different other options we kind of do. Um, if you're looking to have events, I mean, there's birthday party options for kids. There's cocktails and nibbles if you want to go that route. So the, as long as we know you're coming ahead of time and you, you book a party up, I mean, there's, there's very little we can't do. Mm, that's awesome. So you guys catered a lot of different people. What, what is your ongoing vision, uh, Alex? You are a, uh, quite a culinary director here and evolution of the menu. How are you going to continue to make this relevant? I mean, unless you, you know, um, you know, you always have to be evolving. The competition is stiff right now, right? And the restaurant world's coming back now. I feel like, Kansas City's restaurant scene is continuing to get better and better each and every year. No, agreed. And it, it, you got to innovate. Um, I, I think the biggest thing about food is to keep it kind of clean and simple. Um, you know, I, you got to find good purveyors. You know, we go out and whether it's our beef, our pork, our chicken, you know, our vegetables, if we can get them local, you know, we look for those good things. And then we kind of look for fun things to do with them. Um, South Kansas City um, will have an outdoor grill. Um, so we're going to do tacos and burritos off there. Um, we're looking to put a pizza oven out there. So maybe Monday night might be pizza night. Um, so I'm actually testing a wood fire pizza out in Oklahoma city right now. Um, so we're doing typical Napoleon style pizzas out there that, you know, cook in about two minutes and you'll have four or five different options. So it is, um, and the shacks we're looking to do cotton candy and snow cone machines and, you know, things to kind of make it a little more carnival esque. Um, you know, pretzels and beer cheese. So it's, we try to stay kind of on concept, which our concept is all about having fun. So, you know, what kind of fun things can we do? You know, where can we kind of push the envelope in terms of 
you know, flavor profiles um, and, you know, kind of what's trending, you know, these days in food. So that's kind of what we look to do. That's amazing. So Alex, like what's the, what's the general price point if, if I'm walking up to the, to the, to the area to buy food there? I mean, what am I, you know, looking? appetizers, you're looking anywhere from, you know, seven to 10 bucks, you know, rotisserie chicken, you're anywhere from eight to $13, a sandwich with the sides, you know, 12, 13 bucks. So, I mean, the price point's pretty low. Um, you know, catering, we'll do some higher end catering stuff where, you know, you can have, um, Akayuchi, which is kind of like a Wagyu steak out of Texas, strip steaks and another meat and, you know, three or four sides and a salad for, you know, all that for under, you know, 35 bucks a head. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot of different options depending on kind of what you want. Um, we'll, we do custom menus for people. We, the crazy thing right now is we actually have um, on our catering menu, um, like we cook whole pigs. So, and people are buying whole pigs like crazy. It's kind of... <laughs> Oh, wow. I kind of put it on. I, I kind of put it on there just to kind of have fun with it, and you know, do like a luau theme to whole pig. But um, I probably get three or four requests a week for people wanting whole pigs. Um, so yeah, you're, I you're mean, the, you're the nerve, man. Now you're now it's, you're yeah on that uh, not that culinary menu there with the uh, the pig. Who knew? Yeah, I, the time I saw whole pig was at a luau in college, so it's been a while. Yeah, so that's, I mean, we'll do, you know, we'll do whole pig luau style. Cause we, I mean, we have a luau menu or, you know, we'll do kind of a porchetta style. I mean, there's a lot of different options we can do. So it's really kind of, kind of fun, you know, and a lot of these things too. I mean, people ask like, hey, could I just have this? And sure, you know, we'll, we'll make it for you. So um, if it's not our menu, then ask us and we can whip something together. I think we did for a kid's birthday party down in Oklahoma City. I think we did like a mac and cheese bar. So we had like four different mac and cheeses for these kids and let them go at it. So Alex Stop is our guest, culinary director of Chicken and Pickle. The website is chickenandpickle.com. Alex, you know, you got a challenge on your hands and making the food stand out with all the activities going on. Um, how do you do that? I mean, it's you just it, it seems to me it'd be a tougher challenge for you because people are going there to do so many different things but if the food is good you're just going to create so much more buzz you know it's try to take really really good technique um and try to keep things simple um you know we don't like to buy frozen food you know we like to prepare everything in house you know it's well, I think when you start getting into, you know, fast casual concepts, I think a lot of people are, you know, going to Cisco or US Foods and saying, hey, what kind of pre-breaded frozen chicken breast can I have? And let me throw that in the fryer and like passing that off is okay. And that's just kind of not who we are. Um, you know, there's a little more labor into it. And, uh, but we just think the quality is there, you know, for our fried chicken sandwich, um, we dredge them in flour, then they go into an egg wash and they go back in the flour and into the fryer, like right when you order it. Um, so it's, you yeah, know, I mean, it's you say you gotta have a good fried chicken sandwich. I mean, Correct. it's, <laughs> it's not becoming, I mean, I, there's even more people coming to the party now with, uh, I believe uh, Burger King just released one. I mean, as far as the fast food industry goes, it's like, Oh, everyone's doing it. Yeah. Everyone's doing it. So. It's just started in Nashville, right? With that hot chicken there. I, uh -huh. I, I, I've had it down there. It's pretty good, but it seems to me, man, if you're, if you're a place called Chicken and Pickle, you got to have a good fried chicken sandwich. Yeah, I think our I think our fried chicken won, I don't know if it was the pitch or something, won best fried chicken sandwich, I think, a year or two ago. So I think nice. we were well, that's doing, what doing, doing, doing a decent job. When I come up and see you guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be getting that just to try it. Quick question before we go to break, uh, Alex, is what's the best part of your job? Uh, what do you love about being the culinary director at Chicken and Pickle? Uh, you know, I'm blessed. Um cooking's fun. I get to do what I love. You know, I work with a great group of people. Um, I get to work at a place like chicken and pickle, you know, I mean, sometimes we just go out and play pickleball for fun. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of traveling, you know, a lot of work with all these stores opening up, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a pretty relaxed environment. Um, you know, we, we like to have fun while we work. So it's, it's a great company to work for. It's a great venue venues to work, you know, at, um, and great people to work with. Sounds like you have some good flexibility, and I'm hoping that when you create the menus and, and you know, for these other cities, you know, you're going out in the Texas, you know, in San Antonio, and you're going uh -huh. to Richita, there's going to be different flavors and different types of food that you can be creative with, uh, so that'll be really cool. Alex Staub is our guest. He's the culinary director of Chicken and Pickle. Thanks for joining us on the Grill Nation show. We'll be right back after the break. I can't wait to try that chicken sandwich, man. Yeah, it's good. It's, you know, 
it's funny. So a lot of these recipes were developed while we had a test kitchen, but like our chicken brine was developed in. Um, so Dave, who has Max's properties, is our head guy. It was developed. Um, I had a uh, induction burner in the Max's properties office, like <laughs> making brines and stinking up the place. So it's really kind of funny how I'm some of the stuff was I the developed. Pizza. I love the pizza oven that you're getting. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's fun. I, you know, and so we're trying to do like in San Antonio, I have um, steak fajitas, chicken fajitas coming off the grill Thursday through Sunday. Um, we're going to try to introduce steak night. We'll do pizza night. Uh, you know, it's all about getting people there and kind of offering a variety of different things. Um, I don't like using the word carnival because usually you associate bad food with carnival, but it's kind of that, you know, that theme, like it's uh, lots of things going on and just kind of come and have fun and find out, you know, find what kind of floats your boat at chicken and pickle and enjoy it. Got it. Here we go. We're going live again. Uh, last segment in three, two, one. Welcome back to the Grill Nation show with Jason Grill. I really appreciate everyone listening today on the radio. If you're joining us on podcast, on our website, grillnationshow.com, or on my social media live stream right now, I really appreciate all the engagement uh, with, with, the, with the listeners and the watchers today. Apparently, they really have uh, enjoyed our guest today, Alex Staub, who is the culinary director of Chicken and Pickle. Their website is chickenandpickle.com. Okay, Alex, uh, we're in our last segment, best for last segment. First question I have for you is, uh, what is your favorite restaurant in KC or restaurants not named Chicken and Pickle? Ooh, um, you know, I think Pot Pie does a great job. Um, Room 39 does a great job. Um, I'm trying to think. I love Bellinopoly, obviously. Um, yeah, I'd probably stick to those. I, 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 yeah, you, you you said Room Thirty Nine. That's a great breakfast spot. Yeah, you know, it's honestly, I never eat out. Like, I I really don't. <laughs> I mostly cook, so <laughs> I I should eat out more. I I actually eat out more when I'm when I'm traveling. Uh, when I'm home, I'm you know I'm either with my daughter, my significant other, and or my family. I just you know, that's kind of home to me. But actually, when I go out, I actually eat more out in Wichita and Oklahoma City and San Antonio and Dallas well, that, <laughs> than I do in Kansas City. That's a great segue because the next question for you on our best for last segment is favorite food city in the U.S. and abroad. Oh, favorite food city in the U.S. Uh, toss up between New Orleans and New York. Favorite uh-huh. food city Favorite food city abroad. Um I mean, it's got to be somewhere in Italy, right? It is somewhere in Italy. It's tough. Uh, I would probably say uh, probably one of my favorite cities is a small little island or a small little town in Sardinia called Gavoy. Um, but as a food city, I'd probably say uh, Rome. I like the cuisine of Rome. Good option. So, Good choice. Now, yeah. you mentioned New Orleans. That's become kind of a popular answer uh, for people that actually know what they're doing, like yourself, as far as food goes, food cities. You know, it is. It's New Orleans has a unique history. And, I, you know, if you go to New Orleans, you don't really feel like you're in the United States. Um, um, my actually my mom's Italian side came through New Orleans and then on my dad's side, um, his mother's side came through New Orleans. So I got some family ties down there. Um, it's just a cool, unique city. You know, it has a different vibe. You get the, you know, the French Creole. Um, you got a lot of unique influences that kind of give uh, some unique flavors to it. And in New York, I just like New York just goes diversity. Um, it's just, there's so many different foods you can find. There's so many great, you know, chefs, cooks, uh, and even your mom and pop spots are just, they're, they're good. Great so. place. Love New York city. Um, if you could pick one drink or one meal, uh, to have every day for a week, what would it be and why? Oh, uh, probably red wine and pasta <laughs> just cause it makes sense. <laughs> Now, I'm going to make you be specific here because you are Italian. What kind of pasta? Um, you know, if I was eating it every day, probably, you know, bucatini alla macchiana. I mean, just tomato sauce with a little bit of guanciale or pancetta and pecorino romano cheese and call it a day. So something simple. Love it. Um, since you are a chicken and pickle and there's a lot of sports being played, um, and you did go to Rockers, so I assume you were around a lot of athletes uh, growing up. What was your favorite sport to play and favorite sport growing up? Ah, that's a tough question. Um, to play, I guess. 
You know, God, I did I did football, basketball, baseball, and track at Rockers, and I'd probably say out of all those, probably yeah, probably football or basketball. Mm-hmm. So, I'm assuming you're still involved with uh, watching sports here locally. You know, a little bit, a little bit. So, I mean, you gotta have a little <laughs> when you're working at Chicken and Pickle, there has to be some. Uh, they're either the Royals are on or the Chiefs game is on at some like level or Mizzou football game. You know, I actually, I w- I've, I was just at a Royals game. I was just at a sporting game. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. I, I, haven't so. Either, I haven't been to either in probably a year or two. So, yeah. Uh, um, you know but yeah, usually, unfortunately, when I'm working, I, I don't get to watch too much. But no, um, I, I, I enjoy watching all sports. It's How it's often are you at the uh, Kansas City location? Are you, are, you, are you traveling more now with all these other places or do you, are you mostly at Kansas City? I am probably fifty percent of my time in Kansas City, and then um, you know I'll probably travel two or three times a month. So it's not it, it's not a huge huge amount. I mean I'm probably gone nine nine twelve days out of a month. So got it. Um, my next question is: If you could have dinner with one person, who would it be, and why? Um, and let's make it probably. somebody that maybe. Um, we've heard of and not someone that like you're related to. Okay. Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, from a culinary world, probably Marco Pierre white, uh, British chef. Um, I don't know. Someone Kansas city wise. I'm gonna have to Google that British chef now. Yeah. Yeah. He trained Ramsey, Vitale, a bunch of guys. He was the youngest guy to get three Michelin stars. He's kind of a head case wrote a book called devil in the kit devil in the kitchen. Um, so he's, he's still alive and kicking. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. From a Casey uh, side. Casey side. That's a tough question. If somebody walked into chicken and pickle and said, Hey, I want to talk to the culinary director. <laughs> need some rotisserie chicken with him. What, who would it be that you'd want to do that with? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Maybe you've already met everyone. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> not we, true. Not true. You gave us um, a chef, man. You gave us a great chef. So. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll move on. I got a, a question about advice because you know yep. there's a lot of people listening who. Um, who have worked in the restaurant industry or like thinking about getting into the restaurant industry or the cooking world and chef world, the culinary world, whatever you want to call it. What, what is some of the best advice you've received in, in the, the world that you currently live in and that you've lived in for quite a long time? You know, just uh, take care of people, you know, don't be an a-hole, you know, people come there because you're, you know, you're offering a service, you're, you know, you're trying to feed them or, you know, evoke memories or give them some good food, you know, be appreciative of it. Um, you know, treat all your food with respect and care and you know hopefully that shows through so Mm -hmm. you know stay humble don't be an a-hole treat everyone well you know kind of life mottos same thing applies to food you know as it does to everyday life great answer you mentioned um you mentioned some of the things that you're working on um with chicken and pickle you know what what what's next for you what's next for what 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 do you envision the next few years looking like uh with you and the company um, lots of growth, you know, I think we're trying to do after we open up South Kansas city and Dallas this year, we're trying to do four more next year. Um, so my guess is we'll try to pump out four or five of these a year. Um, food wise, you know, I, I think kind of the more, more kind of fun, um, not event type things, but how do we activate certain areas of chicken and pickle? Can you go get a, you know, chicken and waffle sandwich on the rooftop? Can you get something unique out of the shack? Can we do steak night out of an outdoor Argentinian grill? Um, you know, uh, San Antonio, we're bringing our guys we buy beef from. They bring bulls onto the property. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's kind of what kind of fun, kind of cool, unique things can we do, um, you know, with people we partner with? Yeah, that's, and you mentioned earlier that you're the North Kansas City, the original chicken and pickle is actually the smallest. So I feel like you're going to be able to do a lot of other things at some of these other locations. Uh, yes. I mean, South Kansas City is going to have an ice rink during the wintertime. So wow. <laughs> we'll have an ice rink. We'll you have an outdoor we'll some, some, grill. Like, some, some, you know, hot chocolate kind of recipes and get into some weird, like warm type of like 
comfort food, I guess, at that point. Yeah, I mean, we have Mexican, we have, we have Mexican hot chocolate while people ice skate. We, we do it in Wichita. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's the whole idea, right, is to get people out and have fun, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, you know, what kind of food, how does food and drink, you know, uh, interplay with that is, is kind of how we look at things. Well, Alex, I really appreciate you coming on today's show. We've been uh, talking to Alex Saab, who is the culinary director of Chicken and Pickle. Their website is chickenandpickle.com. Dot com. Uh, really appreciate your time today. This is fascinating. I mean, it sounds like this company and, and everything you do is going to continue to expand and grow. And it's pretty cool that it all started in North Kansas City. I'm um, very excited to like go to the next city I go to and just drive by Chicken and Pickle, man. That'll make me feel some hometown pride. So, and I can't wait to come up and try the uh, the fried chicken sandwich to, to, to test out what, you, what, a, what award-winning food you have. And, um, very excited about it. As we enter summer, I couldn't think of a better guest to uh, to have on the show today to talk about everything you're doing than you, because now is the time where people want to be outdoors. So agreed, agreed. We, so we, we greatly appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, Jason. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks to the listeners. We'll see you again next week. I appreciate you joining us today. Have a good one. Take care. Okay, great job, Alex. That flew by. Um, awesome, that was easy. Yeah, <laughs> we are <laughs> going to do a um, a. I'm going to just tape a quick quick sneak peek that okay. we can post to social media. Um, I uh, I'm going to pull up a question here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I, this is gonna be less than two minutes and twenty seconds, Alex. So okay. I'm gonna I'm thinking about kind of what uh, the, the menu question, kind of what the inspiration is, and what your your menu looks like at Chicken and Pickle. If that's okay. Okay. Yep. I'm just typing it out. Okay. Uh, let me set this real quick. Okay. 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 In three, two, one. Hello, everybody. It's Jason Grill, host of the Grill Nation show. Thank you for joining us on this one question sneak peek. I'm joined by Alex Staub, who is the culinary director of Chicken and Pickle. Their website is chickenandpickle.com. Alex, one quick question for you. What is the food inspiration and what does the menu look like at Chicken and Pickle? So the food inspiration, actually, uh, the chicken part came from a restaurant called Chicken and Chicken uh, in the Cayman Islands. So our founder and owner, that's his favorite place. And so he wanted to combine uh, rotisserie chicken and pickleball. Um, so we spent, I don't know, six months developing our brine and our procedures for a rotisserie chicken. Um, and then the rest of the menu is filled with, you know, salads, sandwiches, vegetables, appetizers, um, you know, a good mix between healthy and maybe some not so healthy stuff. So um we try to cover a lot of bases you know from people that you know don't want bread or don't want meat to people who want a fried chicken sandwich um and wings uh things of that nature so you have a great fried chicken sa sandwich i've heard and in the rotisserie chicken you have four different rubs correct 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 what are those so, rubs you got house you got jerk you got southwest and you got seven chili what Alex is doing at Chicken and Pickle is very cool. He's the culinary director. We're going to talk all about that this week on the Grill Nation show. Also, the way they're evolving, they're going to be in a bunch of new markets throughout the country. Obviously, they're here in Kansas City, and they're growing in Kansas City. going to be an awesome show this week with Alex Staub, who's the culinary director of Chicken and Pickle. The website, again, is chickenandpickle.com. Thanks for joining us on this Grill Nation show, One Question Sneak Peek.